Hi, everyone. This is Green by Design, and I'm your host, Erica Reiner. Um, today, I have with me Lonnie Brown. Lonnie Brown is a healthy home expert and the founder of both Wholesome Nest and Entirely Eco, um, where she has lovely home decor for the whole family, and it's certified eco, all that good stuff. And um, I believe you're out in Colorado. Is that right, Lonnie? Yes, I'm in Colorado now. And she's also a mom of two? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> got it. Got it all today. Um, okay, so she is going to talk to us about what she does. But a funny story is that um, we kind of came whole circle because Lonnie reached out to me a few years ago. We were talking about... Um, uh, green interior design. And then years later, um, we reconnected on Instagram and this is only just like a couple of weeks ago. And then she very kindly invited me to the clubhouse, um, like social network thing slash audio, whatever. And then we discovered through our phone numbers that we had already known each other. And she remembered that was where it was from. So it was a really cool kind of like small world eco thing. And I'm so glad to have her on today. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to chat. Yeah. So tell us about what you've been up to for the past few years since um, we last connected and about Entirely Eco and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So uh, when we when we had last connected, I actually hadn't even started an Entirely Eco at that time. I think we, that was like around maybe 2017 or around there. Mm. Uh, but I... Um, was building a home in Denver <laughs> and I was living in the Bay area. I lived in the Bay area for about nine years. And then prior to that, I was down in Southern California for like, I don't know, 20 plus years. And so we were building a home like from scratch in Colorado. And I was living in San Fran, like right outside of San Francisco at the time. And so I was completely overwhelmed with trying to get it all done. I also had a, like a one-year-old at that time. She's now about to turn four. And so I was, I've been, you know, living eco-friendly for a really long time, but because I was essentially building my home from scratch, I, this was my opportunity to get it perfect, to just do all the things I needed to do. But I was also, you know, working full time. I had a one-year-old, I was really overwhelmed. And so I was like, I just need some help. I just need someone who can help me. And I have, you know, I've had other designers who've just been in, in my network, just, you know, because of my own design experience. But I was like, no, I need someone to be really focused on non-toxic green design. I want everything eco-friendly. I want to really focus on the toxins because I have a small, small baby. And that's how I just, I, that's how I found you. And, um, and I just like, I was like, I just need help with the project, but um, anyway, so it, it worked out well and we, we got the home done and it's still, I feel like it's still a work in progress, but as I was going through this experience and even just when I was pregnant with my daughter, I realized that it was really hard to, you know, do this, to like have an eco-friendly home, to make sure that everything was like to my standards. I mean, there's no like nutritional label <laughs> for like home decor and so furnishings and building supplies. I mean, you really, you really have to do your own research and you really just kind of have to know what's out there. And so it was really overwhelming. Um, and so when I went through that process myself, I was like, there has to be, there has to be a better way. There has to be an easier way. And so I did, I got the idea to start my site from just my own experience. And I was like, I want to, I want to, because I was already vetting a lot of these vendors and a lot of these manufacturers and um, really doing that own research on my own, I was like, I want to just have a place where people can come and see products that they like and not have to do all the research there on their own, like they're a trusted source that, you know, has vetted the products and has high standards. And so that's really how I got the idea to start to start my own business. And it's been really fun because people have, you know, have reached out to me and like, I mean, literally in tears, <laughs> like 
like how I was when I was building my baby registry and working on my own home. I literally was sobbing in tears, like trying to figure it all out. And and I've had that same reaction with some of my clients. They're, they're just like, you know, I didn't know this. Like I didn't know, I didn't even understand greenwashing. And because in the home decor industry, like there is no nutritional label, right? It's just so hard. People, you know, manufacturers are able to label things safe for baby, eco-friendly, non-toxic, you know, just all the buzzwords. And they're still like formaldehyde, they're still VOCs. And it's just, it's just hard for moms that just want to have a safe environment. So that's how my company was born. That's a lovely story. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, it kind of breaks my heart to hear that because I'm, I'm sure you can just imagine someone who is like trying to like make all these preparations and already overwhelmed and, you know, trying to like do the right thing to start going down this rabbit hole (laughs) and being like, Oh my God, having all these realizations about how much is out there to be, I guess you could be concerned about and also how difficult it is to parse through it. Um, so uh, yes, it's, um, it's certainly the wild west out there. There's no nutritional label. Like you say, there are lots of different certifications, but you kind of have to go at it like piecemeal and you have to know what your, what certifications you should be looking for, for each type of product. So it's definitely super confusing. Um, my approach is just to do our best, um, and try and balance you know, the client's aesthetic and budget with some of the main concerns that they have and um, just take it one step at a time. So that would be my advice to anyone who's listening, um, who's feeling a little overwhelmed Um, because we've all felt overwhelmed before and it's okay to just do your best. (laughs) Um, But so, okay, so that was a really cool, like, um, initiation story, I guess. Tell me a little bit more about what kind of stuff you sell and how you vet the products and that whole journey, because a lot of what, well, this podcast was, you know, started and is meant for mostly the home pro industry, trying to help mainstream, green design and just make the industry greener on the whole and maybe provide a bit of education for designers or home pros or speckers or whatever, who are, who are trying to learn a little bit more. Um, so that would be helpful to know about what you're doing there. So, so on my store, so I really focus on, uh, like certified organic, um, types of products eco-friendly and really like, I would say bed and bath. So a lot of the like fin- finishings, um, we, I do, um, I do sell like carpet and rugs and things like that. Um, and then for my design clients, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I can source anything, um, uh, paint finishes, um, you know, we do, we do custom built-ins. I mean, all, all kinds of things. Um, but on my store where just someone is maybe not a design client or just shopping, it's really those like finishings in terms of bedding and bath towels and mattresses and pillows and those types types of things. And I'm, I'm actually developing my own line of decorative pillows because in, in even selling on my store, I sell a lot of other brands and other, other vendors with, with green and eco-friendly. A lot of the products, if you think of just the bedding and the, uh, bath products and rugs and just things like that. A lot of them are very earthy tones because I think that's the vibe uh, of eco-friendly and green is, is very, I'm a granola tone. person. That's all. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> they, and a lot of people like that. Uh, but if we want to talk about going more mainstream, um, there's just not a lot of color when it comes to eco-friendly like home decor. And so my line that I am actually manufacturing as we speak is all about color. It's all about, you don't have to sacrifice design and your style and vibrancy to to go green and to go eco-friendly. And so a lot of the patterns and the designs that are in my products that I'm developing are are colorful uh, because that's, you know, people come to me and they're just like, I want to have my home a little more green. I want to reduce toxins. I want to have more sustainable, but 
just everything out there is kind of bland. <laughs> and I'm like, I know I'm like, it's, you know, it, it's a thing because people like that aesthetic, but you know, over the years, there's been so much innovation around just the dyes and colors. I mean, before in order to have like, you know, really natural products, you really couldn't use a lot of dyes just because the dyes themselves were toxic. And there's just lots of chemicals that are in, introduced in the dyeing process. And, um, and so it was hard to get really rich colors. Um, now though, it's, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier. I mean, I, there, I, I'm even looking at packaging that's made with algae ink and, you know, there's just so much innovation when it comes to dyes now and, and colors. So you can actually create and have products that are color rich and still eco-friendly and still non-toxic. So, so it's been really fun to work on that project and to be able, especially as a designer, to be able to bring color, lots more color into the design. So, um, so that's been fun. Color. Amen. Um, Oh, so many thoughts. So yes, when I, when, ooh, just at the beginning, like furniture, accessories, whatever, like you could only really find like a, like, yeah, super granola stuff. Like there was no aesthetic attached to it, not knocking on the Amish, but it was all kind of like Amish style or, um, early American style, like oak furniture, um, and then over time, the attention to aesthetic and style has really increased. Um, but also this like kind of like California modern casual situation and the white wash everything um, is trending right now. So a lot of things are sans color, which is so sad. I love color. You actually can't see in the background, but my walls are actually really light green. They're not white. Um, <laughs> so I think that is a wonderful thing. And I think you really hit the nail on the head with like, just making sure that aesthetic, not that it comes first, but that it's right parallel there with the eco-friendly characteristics of a product. Like I think I've talked about this on here before, but take, oh, who does a good job of this? Um, take like Allbirds or Rothy's or um, even Tom's was kind of like the inventor. I don't know why I chose all shoe companies right now, but um, they kind of paid attention to the aesthetic and also had a green or social component with it, which was the icing on the cake. There are going to be a small percentage of people who choose something that's eco-friendly first, but we're really the minority and it doesn't apply to all greenies in all circumstances because everyone has their criteria and their priority. So I just think it's so critical for people who are and makers who are interested in the green space or greening things up that they really consider things that are selling factors and mainstream factors along with the green part of things, because it's just going to stay so niche and like, you know, tiny market share. And that is not what we want. We want things to be um, spread far and wide and mainstream because that'll have the biggest impact globally. This is a bit of a tangent, but I saw someone posting on some like eco Facebook group I'm in about like small green companies that sold out to bigger umbrella companies and like, oh, what a shame, blah, blah, blah. And I can certainly recognize that in the past, you know, maybe publicly owned companies or big companies might have like washed out some of the good things that started with a mom and pop shop or smaller brand. But I actually view that as being a good thing because they probably have huge distribution and marketing budgets to as long as like the brand can stay in integrity and intact with what they're doing in the first place, which is why they were bought out. Um, that that's actually a really good thing because the more the more people we can get to buy green, the more it'll push for even more innovations and more um, price drops and accessibility and access. So um, that was my Professor Reiner lecture for the day, a little bit of a tangent, but I just think you hit upon a really good point. So congratulations on starting your own line. I can't wait to see all the colorful, fun stuff for your um, throw pillows. Are they gonna be covers or inserts too? 
so there are zippered covers and then, uh, and then I sell the inserts as well, but you can just buy, you know, they could just buy the cover if they want. Mix and match. But it's all GOTS, it's all GOTS certified and yeah. Wonderful. Um, so what do you want other designers to know that you have gained in your experience going through, um, starting your businesses who might be thinking about going green or trying to educate themselves a little bit? Yes. I would love people to know that it's, it's, it's not as hard as people think, um, especially nowadays. I think five years ago, (laughs) 10 years ago, it was a lot harder just because you really had to search and um, there, there wasn't this huge, like as big of a movement. Now though, I think, especially even with the pandemic and COVID, I think just people are way more aware of their indoor environments. They're way more aware of toxins and chemicals and, you know, building up their immune systems. So, you know, I I definitely have been seeing this shift to want to reduce toxins um, and even just groups and communities pop up uh, with lots of people. I mean, some of the communities I'm in are there literally 20,000 people in these groups that are all wanting to like reduce toxins at home and all of that. And so right now I think, um, I think letting people know that you can still have a really well-designed space and it still be eco-friendly. I think that's what people, that's kind of this new wave of of people knowing that, oh, I didn't realize I didn't have to sacrifice design. I didn't realize that there were actual designers out there that specialize in this. Um, It's a great selling point, I think, as industry and as professionals to be able to offer this to your clients. And even, you know, I've talked to other designers where they don't even market themselves as a green mm-hmm. designer. They were like, I just market myself as a designer and I just try to incorporate naturally. Even if the client's not asking, <laughs> I try to incorporate better products, like better building materials, better quality, you know, decor and finishes and things like that. And they'll let them know, you know, these are some of the benefits of the product, but they don't, it's not that they're even wanting clients to seek it out from them. They're just offering this, um, as a standard in their service. And, um, which to me is great because I do think there's a lot of misconceptions around green design and just eco-friendly that it, that it's like way more expensive and that the quality isn't as good as some of the standard conventional products. And that's just not true anymore. And so I think that, as an industry, there's not as many clients seeking this out uh, because of some of those misconceptions. So as designers, we have to just offer this. We have to just make this a part of our practices so that we're just doing better for the planet and doing better for people. Hmm. Yeah, I have heard of that as well. Um, It was a vegan designer who, um, I can't recall her name right now. So sorry about this, but she was saying, someone was asking her on a different interview, like, like, what do you do if they want leather, or like want something, this particular look. And she was like, I just don't even tell them. Like, I just source this faux leather and it looks great and it's great quality and blah, 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 blah. Now, what I will say is I've talked about this on here many times and interviewed an expert on this last season. I have a different take on the sustainability of leather. And I actually think it's really sustainable um, quality product to use. But that aside, um, to your point, yes, I think people are just kind of like wrapping it in. And that's a completely great way to go to you just set like your internal standard of what you're going to be looking for and suggesting to your client and away you go. Um, Another thing I think would be really valuable for you to um, share is your experience because you had your own personal ground up construction experience um getting the contractor and being able to communicate your needs and your specs with that contractor i don't know if i've talked about this on here yet but i did something very similar it wasn't ground up but we did basically like a lot of gutting (laughs) and construction to our place um here in South LA. And I felt like I took every 
opportunity and, and did everything I could to make sure that the contractor and the foreman had my green spec sheet in regards to construction materials. Now this is outside of interior design. Um, this is more like of a green construction pro person or architect or like green coach or like whatever you want to call yourself. Um, but when you're a designer and about to start working with a contractor and there are a few key things that you know about the building envelope and toxicity, it was just about impossible to get them to read and adhere to my spec sheet. Now the quality, I mean, basically like the issues with the contractor is a different story, but I was surprised that in thinking I'm a designer, I can totally like project manager communicate with them. I was surprised at how hard it was to get them to do these green things when they're so used to just churning out projects a certain way that buy the stuff it might already be in the truck blah 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 and I'd see like the caulking bottles in the tr in the trash can and I'm like that is not non-toxic so I would that was my experience I have learned from it it was a very painful point for me but I would love to know how you handled it and what that looked like for you Yes. Yeah, so I, I worked with a major builder. Um, so this is like a planned, you know, community. And mm. so I worked with a major builder. So there, you know, for some of the things that was, it was honestly, some of it was out of my control. Um, but for the things that I could control, um, I just made sure I, they, we just talked about the products, you know, it, it wasn't, um, I felt like I couldn't just say here are my standards and go, I felt like I had to source the products. I had to say like, this is what we're using for paint. This is what we're using for this. Like, what oh else yeah. Are, you know, like it's but just, did you buy them or they bought them? Oh, they bought them. I just, okay. I just told them what to buy essentially. Yeah, I did too. Um, and they ignored me. Oh, they didn't know mine. I, I, I mean, I explained to them why, you know, why this was so important and I uh -huh. am, you know, and you know, we just had that understanding and they, um, they just, you know, they just used what I said and I was on site. So I could actually mm. see that they were like using, you know, using the things I was going back and forth from San Francisco to Colorado. So that was a little difficult, but but my husband was here weekly. Like he his we moved here because his job relocated here. So he was actually already here working. So he would just come by and like look at everything. Um, but that part, you know, that part was uh was it was definitely difficult. I feel like um when I my contractor that I used for all of like my built-ins and um you know, I didn't have my actual builder do any of our built-ins. Um, I, I was like, I'm going to have that com be completely done by my own contractor. So all of my built-ins and everything like that, um, I worked with a contractor and he was already like, not completely green, but he was already like moving in that direct direction and really wanted to, to, to branch into this type of service. And so I was like, We're, this is a huge project. I'm like, he, we, we did all, uh, all of the end caps on all of my stairwells. He did all of our built-ins. I mean, it was, it was a huge, he did all of our like custom master closets, you know, like, so it was a huge, huge project for him, but I was like, I'm going to show you like all the materials that we're going to be using. And he, he also wanted to the ones that I was sourcing, he wanted to be sure that it was going to work for his level as well, just in terms of craftsmanship and making sure that it was going to be a solid product. And so we really got to partner on that. And that was a great experience. And he had the desire to like, really want to go down this direction because he was like, I have seen this kind of shift in people wanting this. So to be able to say that I've done these projects and I can offer this to people is great. And the paint that we ended up using, he had never used before. And he himself you want to give the paint a shout out real quick? Uh, this paint? Yeah, oh, the paint brand. AFM Safe Coat. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you used it? Not that I can think of. Okay. It's oh, like wait, no, I, ha I might have, sorry to interrupt you. I might have their like primer. Yeah, they have, they have a bunch of, they have a bunch of really great options. They even have an option where if you have a piece of furniture that is not non-toxic, like it, it has like glue and formaldehyde in it, they actually have like a sealer that you can put over it that will just 
trap all that in there and minimize the off gassing. But he was really concerned that the, um, that the, the paint wouldn't be to his standard because he was like, Oh, zero VOC, like low VOCs. Like, what are they using? There's no solvents like, or what are they using for the solvent? You know, like he was just really, <laughs> really nervous. And I was just like, look, I know you have a standard of like your, your product, but like, this is really important to me. I have a tiny baby. Like I just, I don't want the off gassing, you know? So he, he used it and he was like, this is amazing. He was like, I'm going to start to use this as a standard for all of my clients, even when they don't ask, ask about it. And he said, it wasn't actually that much more expensive. To, um, so this was something that like he is now using for clients, even when they don't ask. And he was like, it's even better for me as a, as a craftsman, because I'm not breathing in all of those fumes. I'm like, absolutely. So, so that was just an example of a really great relationship that started with, with a contractor who had a little bit of a desire um, and really wanted to learn as, as they went. And so that was a perfect, I think, relationship to be able to, to, to work on this big project. I'm so glad I asked that because my story is a horrible story, but your story was so uplifting. <laughs> That's such a perfect example. And I couldn't have gotten a better response. Um, so that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Um, okay. So what just quickly in like really brief kind of condensed version, what are your like top three go-tos for green design when you're working with a client? Like process strategy wise? Um, you could, uh, it could be that, or it could be like your top tips in terms of uh, what kind of products you like to use. Okay. Either way. So, so uh, when it comes to finishes, so think stains, paints, the, those type of things, I really focus on low VOC or zero VOC. I really specialize in baby environments. So I'm working, my projects that I work on are homes with small children, like nurseries and, and the rest of the home too, but, but baby rooms and, and nurseries and things like that. So for me, like you know, low VOC, zero VOC finishes is like a non-negotiable. Like that is just, you know, um, and then when it comes to furniture, I like, I, I prefer solid wood furniture um, with those zero VOC or, or low VOC finishes. Uh, and then it's really important that the glues and resins that are used also are low VOC so that they don't have that extra formaldehyde that's in them or, or any kind of um, solvents that are added. Um, and there's some certifications that I'll look for, but, but there are a lot of brands that may not have the certifications, um, but they still have quality products. So it's just reaching That's out a to good this point. Company. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, when I was, when, um, when I was working on my own project, I, um, I really care about the aesthetic and the design of the furniture too. Um, and so I found some really, I was like looking into some really good brands. And so I would just ask them like, send me your material data safety sheets. I can look at the finishes that are used. I can look at the glues and the resins that are used and I can determine if, you know, if they're low VOC or not, uh, because some of these, especially some of these smaller furniture companies, they don't have the budget to, to do all of the certifications. Yeah. And so you can find some quality products that, um, that would meet the standards that don't have those certifications that, that could still work. And so usually when I have clients that have smaller budgets, that's usually the route I'll go because those, those companies are going to have all of the certifications that you're looking for. They are going to be a little bit more expensive. So, um, so that, so I would say that, um, those are, those are the big things for me. And then, uh, and then I really, uh, am not a fan of synthetic anything, to be honest. Um, I don't like synthetic rugs, synthetic carpet, synthetic um, materials for like sofas and things like that. Uh, a lot of them are like performance fabric, but it's synthetic and they're made with petrochemicals. They a lot of times have extra flame retardants added to them. So I'm just not a fan of those. So I, I prefer to go the natural fiber route um, without, you know, any of the flame yeah. retardants or pesticides and things like that. So that's a great top three. My quick follow-up question for your, um, second one about like, just send me the data sheet. Are you then cross-referencing the ingredients, so to speak with like declare or like, where are you cross you Google them or like, yes. how does, yeah. What? Yeah. I will usually go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. I will, look, I will look up on declare first. Cause that's usually easy, yeah. easy, quick search. Um, and then a lot of times they just list the product. They're like, this is the finish that we use. So then I will go to that company's site and see if I can find out more about the finish and, 
um, and ask, you know, ask them very specific pointed questions. Uh, because if you just say like, oh, is this non-toxic? They're going to be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so like when I was looking at baby furniture, they'd be like, yeah, it's baby furniture. Like we're all certified. And when they say certified, they just mean, they just mean the like CPSC, like certification where your baby's not going to like get strangled or like, fall oh, out of the yeah. they don't mean yeah. like, they don't mean like not off gassing formaldehyde. Right. So a lot of the baby manufacturers that will say like, Oh, we're certified and we're, you know, our products are, you know, certified safe and all that, but safe is subjective and relative. So they, they mean safe, meaning your, your kid's head isn't going to get stuck between the slabs yeah. <laughs> yeah. like that. Right. So, so, so I have I to like- actually, I have to actually ask them like, no, no, do does your product have formaldehyde in it? Uh, and they'll be like, no, there's no formaldehyde. Why would there be formaldehyde? And I'm like, well, send me your data sheet. Let me know, like, let me take a look. And sure enough, a lot of times there would be formaldehyde. In- yeah. Cause it's just like some customer service or sales rep who was like right. wrapped on how to sell and like their product lines and have the manufacturing. The, one of the problems with manufacturing, I think like being far removed for a lot of things that we're importing in the U S is like, there's just an informational disconnect, let alone like the socioeconomic debate about it or whatever, but it's just kind of like same thing with our food industry. Like when you're so removed from how, um, the sausage is made, like, it's Mm -hmm. just, we, I, you can't really expect the sales people who are making whatever minimum wage to like, no for you. Um, with the exception of a few great companies and hopefully more to, more to, um, come onto the market. Um, so really good points. Again, um, there has been some debate about the very heavy, difficult topic of sudden infant death syndrome and what causes that. And I'm curious what you've come across in your research, because as a mom and also as now a practitioner, um, I have seen like scholarly, you know, write-ups on both sides of the issue. One was an older study from New Zealand that had like super conclusive results from, you know, like the kind of mattress, et cetera. And then I've seen a lot of stuff like debunking that or trying to debunk it. So just wondering if you had any thoughts, it's a hard topic, um, but let me know what you've seen. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no disputing the firmness of the mattress like that has definitely been proven, but whether or not the mattress is organic or not off gassing certain chemicals or flame retardants, I mean, it's still, it's still, it's still like kind of out there, but my, my take on this is there is not a lot of knowledge around SIDS just in general, right? The they, uh, they can't really explain it. They know that certain things can contribute or, you know, increase the risk or decrease the risk. But in terms of definitive, like this causes this, it's just, it's just hard. So, um, so I say that because it makes a point for both sides, right? The side that's like, this is impacting this. It's like, we don't know. And the side that says, well, this might not be impacting this or it's, it's not conclusive. They also don't know. So I, I look at things that they have proven, like, you know, when a tiny newborn baby has been exposed to smoke, right? Um, they're breathing in that smoke, their lungs are still developing that is linked to increased SIDS, right? And they've done some studies on that. Um, and that's ex- impacting the respiratory system. So in my point of view, anything else that is going to impact their respiratory system, like off gassing of toxic chemicals that are known carcinogens already, right? We can't say that that does not increase the chance of SIDS. And so we don't want to be the guinea pigs. And so that's why I err on the side of telling clients that like, yes, like if you have a safer mattress, it is going to decrease the risk of SIDS. Like it just is. Your baby is not breathing in known carcinogens, right? Um, And so even if that isn't conclusive or, you know, proven, um, I think that the link is strong enough to make the case that we should go down this route until we're proven otherwise. Well, thank you for your take on that. I appreciate it. Um, And for my last easy question, where is one place that anyone listening who wants to contact you can find you? 
Uh, I would say my website, <laughs> which is just entirelyeco.com. Uh, and like, I have other ways to contact me from the website, like all my social handles and all of that, but that is where, um, I hang out. I, I frequently will put, uh, content out on the site, educational resources, uh, products, just all the good stuff. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this has been, um, really enlightening and so fun. And I'm so glad that we got to reconnect in this, small world of eco warrior stuff. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and sharing your story with us. Um, and I'm sure we'll catch up soon, maybe on clubhouse. Yes. Okay. <laughs>